Greetings. In this video, we will witness a failed arterial line attempt. I would love to get a feedback on what our community would do differently. And of course, there are several techniques for the placement of radial arterial line, and two of the more common ones are known as over the wire and over the needle, and both can be done with and without ultrasound guidance. Now, arterial line is essential for continuous monitoring of blood pressure in patients with hemodynamic instability or in patients who require inotropic or vasopressor medications. It allows for reliable access to the arterial circulation, for the measurement of arterial oxygenation, and for frequent blood sampling where necessary. It is an important skill to master for anyone treating or administering anesthesia in critically ill patients. But comes to the technique, I disagree with some of the recommendations provided in the literature and many manuals on arterial line techniques and I particularly disagree in three what I consider ancestral technique aspects. The first one is a common recommendation is that the needle should enter at about 30 to 45 degree angle to the skin over the point of the pulse palpation and I strongly disagree. That angle may be adequate for arterial line sampling, blood gas, but not for insertion of the arterial line catheter. The angle, in my opinion, should be much lower, closer to 20 to 25 degrees, to assure that the needle tip does not continue through the arterial lumen into its posterior wall, which would damage the wall and prevent the catheter advancement. Number two, the recommendations often advise a slow needle advancement. Again, I disagree. I believe that the best needle insertion is a rapid and fast insertion to prevent artery from rolling. Many patients who require radial arterial line are older, sicker, and often have arteriosclerosis and thicker, tougher arterial wall, which requires a faster needle entrance to prevent displacement by the needle. Number three, and many techs on a technique suggest administration of the local anesthetic as an option for comfort of the patients who are conscious. I believe, however, that the local anesthetic, such as lidocaine 1% or 2%, should be mandatory. Also, to decrease the arterial spasm when the needle interacts or enters the arterial wall, particularly with a failed attempt. If the artery goes into a spasm, you may not be able to cannulate it any further, and therefore, administration of lidocaine may prevent this. But let's watch the video and see where the mistakes may have been made with this attempt to cannulate the radial artery. And that was it, a failed radial artery cannulation attempt. Make sure to hit subscribe button to see the follow-up video on what we did to overcome the problem and successfully cannulate the radial artery in the same patient. But in the meantime, I would love to get some feedback on what you believe were the mistakes that led to the failure, what you would have changed or done differently, and three, should ultrasound guidance be mandatory for radial arterial lines? Until next time.